All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Dreamforce recap webinar. Um, we have a lot of participants. We're really, really excited to get things started. So my name is Andrew Duncan. I am the partner account manager at Cloud Adoption Solutions. So Cloud Adoption Solutions is a 100% female owned certified Salesforce partner. And uh, we have the privilege of today going over what my boss, Shannon Gregg, who is the president of Cloud Adoption Solutions, saw, had to offer, and um, was involved with at Dreamforce this year. Um, she was actually asked to speak, so we're gonna see a lot of inside tips, um, a lot of the different things that were going on, um, vendors that were there, videos and pictures, and we're gonna hear a lot of the inside scoop, which is great. So if you weren't there in attendance, it's an awesome opportunity for you to learn some new things. Um, one of the things that we also saw and noticed was trending on Twitter, is that people were complaining about the lack of stickers at Dreamforce this year. Salesforce people are all about their stickers. We know people love to put them on their laptops and their folders. So um, if you stick around until the very end of the presentation in this webinar, we will be able to go ahead and tell you how you can get a free sticker pack from us and have it sent to you. So um, we're really excited about today. We're gonna share some incredible tips and Shannon is gonna go ahead and take it away from here. Hey, hey, thank you, Andrew, so very much for the introduction. I am so pumped to try to squeeze what was a week of 14 hour days into this little amount of time that you have dedicated to spending with us. So thank you so much. I want to give you just an overview of what Dreamforce is. If you have never been there, it is a spectacle. It's an event like you've never seen before. So what I'm showing you right now is Dreamforce by the numbers. Four days of programming, over 171,000 registered attendees. That doesn't count all the people that came in on passes or were vendors. 16 million people were able to view things online while they were happening live. They did a really nice job of kind of showing the different um, keynotes live while they were happening, which was cool. The whole entire city of San Francisco is taken over by people who are coming from every single state, over 120 countries. One of the things that I'm going to tell you about a little bit in the end was the admin keynote. And where I got to sit in the admin keynote, I saw that there were whole sections of people who were receiving translation in loads of different languages, including ASL, which I thought was really amazing. So they have tracks for everybody there, sales tracks, admin tracks, executive tracks, and the way that they put out and parse their programming means if you go and you can't find programming that makes you think, how will I divide myself into four while I'm here? It would be really surprising to me. So they had amazing people speaking there. They had just an astonishing lineup. So I can't wait to run through it with you and tell you some of the things I took away. I know that the number of notes that I took in my phone, photos that I took, things that I wrote down saying, this specific client is gonna love this one thing, or I have a client, I have a bunch of clients who I think will really benefit from that insane. I came home and debriefed with the team and said, We've got to get busy because we have so many things to share with our clients and I can't wait to roll them out to everybody in 2020. So another couple other things I wanted to tell you about that I thought was really interesting this year at Dreamforce, they were really focusing on the UN sustainable uh, development goals. There are 17 of them, but Salesforce was really focused on six and all of their vendors and a lot of their speakers were also focused on those things too. So they would tell you specifically, this is in relation to this particular UN sustainable development goal, which I thought was really amazing. Down to even when we went to Dreamfest, there was no beef in the park because that's one of the challenges. Methane gas is a big challenge to the environment. And so what I saw this year was a holistic approach that was business focused but also really considering our impact on the entire universe, which, which was really, really cool. We saw loads of kids there. There were lots of people who were doing education. And I think whenever we were kind of walking around the whole entire experience, taking in how much it's changed and grown since the very first time that I've gone, 
it was pretty exceptional. So they were focused on being the most sustainable dream forest ever. And Andrew mentioned about the great sticker <laughs> debate this year of dream forest 2019. And it is true. There was just not as much fast swag and that was intentional. Vendors were even asked to be thoughtful about the things they were giving away and how they were sustainable. And so that was pretty interesting and fun to see. So when you've got over 171 thousand people attending in one city in four days it puts a ton of pressure on the environment and it was really interesting to see how everybody was approaching that which i really enjoyed so the first thing that i really want to show you is where some of the videos are housed because you may have something very interesting that you want to see and self-source i'll tell you right now if you raise your hand our team is ready to help you find those things if you feel overwhelmed by it but i'm going to give you a quick little demo so that you can understand where the things are if you want to get through yourself we have been spending every waking moment <laughs> since dreamforce going through these videos and making sure that we captured all the things that we could since dreamforce is really everywhere in san francisco they told you in the app this year here's how long the walk's going to be between these two sessions that was really helpful you almost cannot do ground coverage as even a team of people so we went through the agenda builder when it was released and said here are the things we definitely want to see and here are the things that we we know that we're going to be able to catch on video once it's over so what i'm showing you right now is available at salesforce.com video and you are able to scroll through the keynotes now the keynotes typically work like this whoever is delivering the keynote gives you the information tells you what they've been working on and lets you know if this is currently available generally available if it's in beta or pilot so you can sort of understand hey this is this is something that i can see right now or this is something i'm really excited about in the future and then they do a demo so they show you here's exactly how this works and most of the time they introduce a customer or somebody who's already applied it so you can really start to latch your whole entire brain around the art of the possible so what i'm showing you here is where all the keynotes are so the keynotes really are focused on specific things customer success admins small businesses so regardless of what kind of salesforce customer you are there was something there for you and you now can watch these all from the leisure time of your own home or office <laughs> and your feet will probably feel much better than ours did after four days of walking around an entire city so one of the things i really want to tell you about was the opening keynote so the opening keynote was pretty spectacular it always is so it's launched by mark benioff who's the co-ceo of salesforce one of the founders of salesforce and he really introduced the customer 360 platform the idea of customer 360 so this is something that we really are looking forward to working with all of our clients around in 2020 to say hey here's how you're using salesforce currently and here's how to get all of the things out of salesforce that you can and want to so I was pretty excited and I almost fell off my seat. I was sitting next to my friends and I said, oh my gosh, Mark Benioff is showing almost the exact same slide that Mike Gerhold are showing in our session on Wednesday. So that was a really interesting and fun thing for me. So he showed this customer 360 slide that I'm going to show you guys because I want to give you a quick run through of what we shared in our session. And that was the first thing that he talked about was customer 360 truth and how you're going to be able to really use Salesforce to develop all that you need to understand your customer at all times in real time. So this was really cool. It was a nice way to say, we're going beyond being a company to being a brand that is 100% focused on our customers. And that's why we're all in business, right? We want our customers to succeed. And so some of the tools and, and tips that they really rolled out in the opening keynote are gonna help you get there. So customer 360 truth is definitely something to watch out for. It's something you can investigate further or we'll help you get inside of if that's where you wanna go. Um, you can help understand your customer data. They're rolling out blockchain so that you can, if you're working in a highly regulated industry, you can share that information and not worry about it getting stuck or caught somewhere that it shouldn't be. And they had the chief product officer come and talk a little bit about how you can build one single source of truth. 
Now, anybody who's known me for more than 10 minutes knows that one of the reasons why I love Salesforce so much is I love this concept of single source of truth, to go to one place and not dig around in my email, my text messages, my Snapchats, my pigeon carriers, and try to understand where are we with this customer right now? And that really was something that they talked about so much that even during the keynote, Mark Benioff called it SSOT. So single source of truth is such a big and pervasive idea now that it has its own acronym. So enter that into your alphabet soup. And the next announcement that had people cheering and people were literally sitting around us clapping their hands was new Einstein capabilities. So Einstein has had, in my opinion, an interesting start. It sort of came in talking, you know, mostly about analytics and how you could use that information to make data-driven decisions for your business and understanding your clients. And now they brought on stage an Einstein speaker. So it was actually a little speaker that looked just like Einstein and you could ask it questions. They did a live demo, which made me sweat a little bit. Live demos always do. And they actually had their product team go through and ask Einstein some questions. And so I instantly started thinking, how could our clients be using this in their pipeline meetings and their client review meetings, their governance? How could this be applied in a way that will make people say, okay, yes, I'm getting what I need, I'm getting it quickly, and I love the concept of this. And so we saw these Einstein speakers all around the Dreamforce campus. They're adorable, they're super cute. But I think the whole idea was just to say, how can we take this information that we have about our customers and make it immediately actionable? Not when we review our reports every Monday morning, but how can we make it so that it's immediately actionable so we're doing the right thing for every customer at the right time? Of course, there's AI built in, there's pathways, there's journeys, there's loads of ways to say, if a customer meets these particular parameters, this is what we're gonna do next, and that is gonna be super, super cool. So voice solutions, big. This is gonna be a really big thing that I can see coming in the future that is gonna be a huge asset to the Salesforce platform. And then, also in the keynote, they talked about Tableau. So Salesforce acquisition of Tableau was a huge deal. Analytics are big. That is why everybody uses Salesforce. There's loads of ways to get to analytics now, but it was interesting to see how Tableau is starting to fold itself into the Salesforce ecosystem. So that was interesting. They got to bring in the Tableau CEO, and that was really cool. I loved it. So the primary keynote, I would encourage you to watch if you'd like to be dazzled because it is a real razzle-dazzle show. Mark Benioff, one of the things I love the best about him is his preparation for a presentation. So I've read that he practices every speech seven times and I believe it because the guy is an amazing orator. But this year something happened that was overwhelming to me for a large number of minutes. There were protesters that broke in to the keynote. And for a few minutes, we looked around trying to figure out was this part of the stage show because Salesforce does a great job at their stage shows. They think of everything. Not one single column in the whole entire hall wasn't decorated with gobos or lights making the columns look like actual trees. So you felt like you're outside. The lights went down, the screens went off, and Mark Benioff stopped talking. And the protesters came in. We could not hear what they were saying. Twitter almost immediately was broken because we were all looking on there saying, what is happening here? And then Mark ben Benioff said, hey, look, I value free speech. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to speak. You're interrupting my conference and the conference of all the people that are here, but I'm going to let you talk. We couldn't hear what they were saying. We found out later it was a political protest, but it was interesting for me to see and, and sort of feel that sort of pressure, what happens when that happens in the middle of your, your giant keynote presentation that's being streamed to, I think we saw 16 million people at once. I know when I went through speaker training, I went through the National Speakers Association, they did a lot of things to us to see what would happen, turned our microphones off, you know, interrupted our presentations, but this was a, something at a scale. I could not believe the amount of confidence and cool approach that Mark Benioff kept. So on a personal note, I thought that was really interesting. Now, you could also access all of the sessions that were presented at Dreamforce. And what I'm showing you right now is the Dreamforce login page. And here you can see even sessions that you couldn't attend have 
a large amount of information inside of them now. So we've got a um, large practice in regulated industries such as financial services and life sciences. So I really tried to tailor all the things I attended to the clients that we have so I could help them the best. That's where I spent all of my time. Now I'm going to be able to go back and catch some of the ones that were on my periphery, marginally interesting, or that made me feel like I was being cut in two and couldn't be in two places at one time. So I'm going to show you how to get to these. And when I send out the recording of today's webinar, I am also going to send you the link to my presentation so that you can have that as well. So when you go in, you can find, you can type in the words that you're interested in. So if you are working with pharmaceutical companies or you're a financial manager, you can type those words in and all of the sessions that pertain to that come in. Really cool to be able to do this because you can see how companies either you compete against or work with, partner with, are approaching things using Salesforce. This is always very inspirational to me. So my particular session was called Deliver Your Company's Vision with Salesforce. You can see I first had to bookmark it until Agenda Builder went live and then I was able to enroll in it. Shows you where it was, how to get there. But what I love the best about it this year, they now have trailhead badges that they recommend that go along with each session. As session um, presenters, we were able to help select those. Mike Gerholt was just phenomenal when we were setting this up at saying, here are the things that I think make the most sense, Shannon. And since he is the Senior Director of Admin Evangelism at Salesforce, I was like, I think you're exactly right. <laughs> so we put those badges inside of ours and you can see the session, if it was recorded, is now available online and there is chatter around the session too. So that can be found inside of dreamforce.salesforce.com. You can get all of that sort of information. I want to share with you just a few things that, that we gave in this presentation. Mike and I actually have done a few different versions of the same presentation. We keep making it tighter and tighter. We did it at Trailhead DX in May, which is Salesforce's second largest conference. That's focused on true developers. And then we did it on the admin track this year at Dreamforce. So we presented it to a room largely of admins and executives, company presidents or, or line, line of business leaders. So I'm going to run through some of that with you. And then once I get through that, I want to show you some of the cool stuff I saw, tell you a little bit about our brush with some of the musicians that they had this year because Dreamforce is a completely experiential event. And then we're going to tell you how to get your hands on some of these stickers because I am telling you Twitter has been exploding with calls for stickers. So um, I will tell you that Salesforce does a very nice job of saying what we do is experiential. Nobody grabs and loves a SaaS-based software program because that's what they are. They're enterprise software, right? So they try to make everything that they do an experience. That's why they've got Astro, you can see here, and Cody. So it feels like something tangible for pe something people to grab onto. It, the conference halls that they have there, Moscone centers, north, east, southwest, is there an east? That's how much I can't remember. I was running around the whole entire week. They cover the street, Howard Street, in between the convention centers with AstroTurf and they build this beautiful forest. So you don't even realize, I'm in the middle of one of America's largest cities attending a tech conference full of almost 200,000 people. That's really amazing. One of the things that I think I would encourage everyone to do is think about how you can get that sort of attraction back to your business too. How can you make what you do feel so tangible? Because Salesforce lovers are fanatics. When I got to go to the admin keynote, people were dressed up in their Salesforce costumes. They had blinged out shoes with a Salesforce logo. They had earrings made, they had hairpins. As they were going down to the admin keynote, there was a parade that went from one of the Moscones to another where people had signs and banners saying, admin keynote. They were so jazzed up. And for me to look around and think, wow, people love this so much. They're getting tattoos. That's insane. So I would tell you, think about how you can make your company so irresistible too, so experiential that people love it. I want to run through really quickly for you some of the key points that we had in the presentation that we gave, which was how to deliver your company's vision with Salesforce. 
I think many of you know that I am on my dissertation year of my PhD, which is focused on how organizations use Salesforce CRM systems to get more productivity and be able to spend more time on their mission. So Mike and I took what he does as the Senior Director for Admin Evangelism at Salesforce and what he knows from his life as a user and some of the academic theory I have and as a Salesforce user for 10 years and tied it all together into this presentation. I did get invited this year to Customer Coa, which I'm gonna tell you about after I run through these slides with you really quickly, which was a really nice way to say, hey, Shannon, thanks for using Salesforce for 10 years. We wanna recognize you for that. So that was pretty awesome. Of course, there is the forward-looking statement which says if we introduce you to anything that is new interesting or currently unavailable in salesforce do make your, do not make your purchasing decisions based on that so i will send this resource to you mike and i began our presentation by saying we have a companion worksheet so you can outline exactly how you want to take these things back to your office one of the things i know from my research on adult learner theory is Everything I tell you right now in this hour, you're going to go away from it. Remember 10%, that's the way it's going to go. So by giving you a companion worksheet, you'll be able to really take away what you learned, write it down, remember it, and put that plan into action. So there is an entire Dreamforce admin workbook that you can also attain, which is at sforce.co slash df19 admin workbook. And there's lots of information in there that you can get. Mike and I presented this based on three chapters. One is build the vision, two is shape the environment, and three is deliver the results. So inside of these three chapters, I present these three different academic theories and then how you can apply it at your office. And so I wanna give that to you because I love this concept. We put a ton of work into it. Mike and I met at least one hour every single week in between Trailhead DX and May and when Dreamforce kicked off. So there's tons of good information on here. This is the slide I was telling you that Mark Benioff, the co-CEO of Salesforce, presented, which is where are you with the Salesforce vision? So you can, uh, looks like Courtney thinks the screen is frozen. So let me stop my share and I will restart it so we can get onto that presentation. Thank you, Courtney, for helping us out with that. I am sharing now the Salesforce vision slide and hopefully you can see that. If not, I will be able to share this whole entire slide deck with you as a PDF and you will be able to see it yourself. Great. Thank you, Angela and Courtney. I'm so glad you guys can see it now. Cool. So this wheel that you see right here is exactly what Mark Benioff presented at his keynote, which was unbelievable, pretty amazing. And what the first thing that we really asked everybody to do, and I would ask all of you to do this, is to understand where are you with your Salesforce vision? So look at this and say, do I have these particular products and how well are we using them based on three states? One, create the vision, two, expand that vision, and three, strengthen that vision. And so when you get your worksheet, you'll be able to be really thoughtful about saying, you know, maybe here in the sales cloud, we're at strength and we're using it really well. We're capturing activities there. I can understand exactly what everybody's doing and I can draw some good data driven decisions based on that information. However, maybe we've just rolled out service cloud or marketing cloud. So we're still in the create stage there. And that's the first thing I would tell you to do. Don't think about Salesforce as one giant wheel where you're just in one place because chances are really good based on each product, you're going to be somewhere a little bit different. So when you're creating the vision, there are particular behaviors that you're going to use. And this is whether you are your organization Salesforce admin, the president of your organization, whoever you are, you're going to have a desired need for Salesforce. There's going to be a reason why you keep paying this tab month after month to Salesforce, to your partner. This is what I really want you to think about is what is the vision? So how can you create a vision that says, based on what I know is possible or based on what somebody can help me understand is possible, this is where I want Salesforce to get to. And 
a lot of you and a lot of times Salesforce helps people to understand the crawl, walk, run theory. And a lot of people that we really whiteboard with, we do it just like that. How do we crawl? How do we get there? How do we walk and how do we run and make sure that we are doing this in a way that works for our organization. The next is to expand that vision. So once you've created it, continue to make it bigger and bigger so that it does the things that you want it to do, and then really strengthen the vision. Make sure that when those three releases come out a year, that you're understanding what that means, what the implications are for your organization so that you can be really strong inside of there. And one of the pieces of science that my dissertation is focused on is Lewin's change management theory. So the change management theory really has three basic steps, and you can use this at work or in your personal life, which is is once you've determined what it is you want to change, first, unfreeze it by letting go of old patterns. So if you're used to not working out and you decide for 2020 on January 1, you want to work out, this is where you're going to decide how you can get out of those old patterns of maybe going to happy hour right after work and going to the gym instead. And then you're going to change what those thoughts, feelings, and behaviors are, and you have to refreeze the habit and help make it stick. So a lot of times when we're the run ones that are running the change management inside of our organization, we've taken ourselves emotionally and mentally through these three steps and we introduce it to our team in that third step. We start at building a new habit and they're like, hey, wait a second. I don't even know why we're doing this. And so using these three steps as a guiding light for you will help you to remember everybody has to start back where you started. Just because you're starting already at the third stage doesn't mean that they were there with you. So this is a great tool to help you keep that Salesforce vision really growing. So one of the things I would tell you to do is interview people and what they'd like to see Salesforce do deliver the art of the possible, which could be in demos, videos, asking people for help so that you can know what else Salesforce can do that would make it stickier or more effective and more efficient for your organization. And then finally, taking those new standards and making them part of what you do in your organization. So I love Lewin's change management theory. It is from the 1960s, which is barely older than me, but it still works today. So I would tell you, go ahead and get inside of that. So the next thing you'll do is build that vision. And inside of that, in, after you've built the vision, you're gonna shape the environment. And here's the way you're gonna do that. If you haven't read the book, Crossing the Chasm, I would tell you, get that on whether you listen to an audiobook or you read it page by page. This is a phenomenal book for people who are at the top of their company, who are leading change, leading organizations, or when you're in sales and you're trying to become a trusted advisor to your clients. Inside of Crossing the Chasm, this diffusion of innovations is very heavily referenced. And this is an innovation adoption life cycle that will tell you how people adopt new things. It could be technology, a new iPhone, it could be a new process, a new way to do things, a new entrance to your building. It really could be anything that's new. In that, you're gonna see this traditional bell-shaped curve Although in the left-hand side, you'll see your innovators and your early adopters. These are people that just love to change. They love to try new things. They're really into new technology. They're going to be your stakeholders that you will use as your cheerleaders that will keep you pushing forward on whatever change you're trying to bring. In the middle, you have the majority. These people are going to do it because now it's expected of them. It's become part of the fabric of the DNA of your organization. And then all the way down at the end, you have your laggards. These may be people who just are not ready for new technology or processes. They sort of dig their heels in and say, that's not the way we've always done it around here. Be aware of these categories of people. And I can tell you, if you decided right now, hey, tomorrow we're gonna roll out something brand new at our company, you would be able to tell me who fits in those five categories. Be aware of that because your messaging will be a little bit different to each one of them. Look at your environment. So how innovative is your culture? If it is a slow moving, um, bureaucratic environment that requires a lot of signatures because you have a lot of oversight or you've got a lot of regulations, it will be very challenging for you to then say, we're gonna roll out something brand new and we're gonna roll it out by Friday. It won't work there. So think about these elements of innovation culture. Know what the innovation is and how people will adapt to it. 
who your adopters are based on that technology adoption model I just showed you, what the communication channels are because you'll want to use them all when you're changing something, what your time is, use those SMART goals, right? Measurable, accountable, reasonable, time bound, and then what the social system is. So how you can get people to be multipliers of you. You love the change or else you wouldn't be rolling it out. So how can you find those people that are sort of in that early innovator category who will help you bring that change along? You'll find that your approach should really be per product. We mentioned that a little bit earlier. And whenever you're looking inside of how you wanna deliver the results, I wanna tell you that you have to be your own best cheerleader. You wanna tell people, and if you've ever taken a presentation class, they'll say, tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell it to them, and then tell them what you told them. And that's the same thing you wanna do with your team whenever you're rolling out something new. This technology acceptance model is a traditional model that says your users are gonna be thinking about the usefulness of what you're rolling out and whether it's easy to use. So in a very basic story, I can remember when I got my first iPod and I was so excited to use it. And I'm telling you my age now when I tell you, I did use to carry my Sony Walkman onto planes with me. I would be traveling for work and I would have my little cassette tape that I had pressed play and record on so I could have my favorite songs on there. And I was so pumped when the iPod came out, I could not wait to use it, but I could not figure the thing out. There was nobody to help me I just could not understand it. There were all these chords. You had to have this separate program. It wasn't as easy as an MP3 player where you could sort of drag and drop things from whatever you used and definitely not LimeWire and Napster. <laughs> and, and so whenever I had this iPod, it sat in its box for a few months because while I thought it was gonna be really useful and helpful, it just didn't seem easy to use. So think about that whenever you're rolling out something new to your people that you're working with, with your new process or technology, because they are gonna say, what's in it for me? They might not say that to you. If they say it to you, it's great because you get to overcome their objection. They're gonna say it in their heads. Why should I do it this way? Why do you want me to log into the system? Why do I have to click all these things now? Why do you wanna measure the things that I'm doing? And so think as your user and say, what will be useful to them and how easy will it be to use? And how can I message that in my communication? How you do it is by walking around. Walk around, see how people are using the things. Have them show you, have your sales user, users show you, hey, here's how I create a new opportunity. These are the things that I'm doing to convert a lead into a uh, contact. Have your service users show you, here's what happens when my cell phone pops up. Have the people who are using marketing show you, here's how I create a new campaign. So look at exactly how they're doing it so you can say, I see, I can see where the waste is. And use that Lean Six Sigma approach to say, if it's crossing this many barriers and this many people are involved, is there an automation that can be put in there? Is there a flow we can add instead? Because really, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do with Salesforce, besides get really amazing data-driven insights is to understand how you can let people do more of what they do best, which is delight your customers. So if someone can do their job outside of Salesforce, there is room for you to grow inside of your Salesforce instance. So a quick review of this whole entire thing is you wanna build your vision, you wanna shape your environment, and you wanna deliver your results. Once again, I will send you this companion worksheet that you're really going to like. I'm going to stop the share for one second so I can switch over and just show you two other things that I have that I thought were super fun and cool. I sent out a Dreamforce recap every single day and those of you that know me know that I love being inside of things. And this sales, this Dreamforce recap was a challenge for me to say every day at the end of the day, here are the things that we saw and heard. And so I saw some really cool things. The first day, Alicia Keys was the surprise musical guest. Very casual, right? That was neat. She came out and she sang her heart out. It was really beautiful. Nice way to wrap up the keynote. I saw for the first time the Partner Force Lodge. As, as most of you know, I was an avid Salesforce user before I transitioned onto the side of helping other people use Salesforce better. So this was my first time inside of the Partner Lodge. And I got to tell you, our clients are going to be super pumped in 2020 when they can see all the things that I was able to gain from the Partner Lodge that we're going to be able to help them with. 
One, I found the partners who have different areas of specialization than we do. So I now can help ask them questions to say, tell us a little bit more about how you've implemented this particular thing that we don't specialize in. We've got a client who's considering this. What do you think about this particular thing? And so that was really cool. But I also learned a lot of things about the way that other partners are approaching their customer relationships that I think is going to really make us even more fun and easy to work with in 2020. Because I think most of you know, when I was a Salesforce user and I worked with partners, my thing was always like, I just want to do better in the system and I want you to be the one to help me. And we are completely focused on that. <laughs> Being from Pittsburgh, I can't help it. We're all born with that Mr. Rogers in our blood. So we're just here to be helpful. And I loved being able to get into the Partner Lodge this year. It was interesting. All of the sessions we attended, they were very, very small. And most of the other partners were big names that I had heard of before. So it was great for me to have access to them to say, tell us a little bit about how you make governance easier with your clients. Tell us a little bit about how you're able to help your clients find the best thing at the best rate at the best deal. And so that is going to be something that I will treasure and I will make sure that every Dreamforce from here on out, I am always at that partner lodge because it just felt like a really good place. Next, and I think that I have Monica on, and I would love for Monica to tell the story about how we got in to see Eddie Vedder, and this lady got us into the second row, which was really cool. Um, while I am waiting for her to unmute and let me know if she is willing to talk about that, I will tell you that the Dream Fest, which took over Oracle Park this year, I think I mentioned before they didn't have any beef. The opening act was Beck, and I could not believe that Beck was 49 years old. That, that was astounding to me. And then the main stage performer was Fleetwood Mac. So it was really fun. It was really interesting to see. I saw a guy in front of me who, he was FaceTiming his wife, who must have been a giant Fleetwood Mac fan. And so it was really cool to see how everybody sort of responded to having these two different acts be here. We've seen some really cool people. My favorite was Foo Fighters. The year that we saw Foo Fighters was my favorite. And this year there was this kind of cool retro theme and I saw this Dreamforce bus all over the place. So I had to get my picture in front of it. I did want to take it. I wanted to get inside of this bus and drive it. And there's a couple pictures of me and Mike before our presentation. So that was really fun. Um, Monica, I'm going to see if you were on so you can tell everybody how we got to see any better. Yeah, Shannon, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Um, yeah, so hey, everybody. Uh, I had the absolute pleasure of um, attending Dreamforce this year um, with two of my favorite Dreamforce evangelists, Shannon being one of them. Um, and a couple of days before um, we went to Salesforce, I got a note on Facebook that Eddie Vedder was speaking uh, at the event. And I spent a lot of my youth in flannels and combat boots. <laughs> I'm dating myself. And I kind of had heart palpitations because I know what these, what these sessions sort of go like. They're super small. Um, you get an opportunity to be in a small room with somebody that maybe you worshipped over time in your life. And Eddie was definitely one of those people. So I quickly sent Shannon um, and my colleague a note and said, register for this event. So cut to the chase. Uh, I recognized that there was probably going to be a really, really, really strong attendance for this. We happened to be enrolled, so we lucked out. But I felt about two hours before the session that I should go check out the line. And I'm glad that I did because it was the longest line I had seen at Dreamforce, um, except for a a keynote and so I'm texting Shannon and she was not far away so she jumped in the line with me. <clears throat> what was really cool about standing in that line was you sort of went back to your youth with all of the people that were kind of feeling the same way you were. Um, we managed to get through, we had to go through security and then we got into a holding tank before they let us in and we kept moving up. Somehow we kept moving up but initially I had gone to one of the line uh, leaders uh, that works for Salesforce and said, I'm enrolled. This line looks really long for enrolled. And he said, well, we're going to break into two. So I was like, listen, you're going to have to move me up. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> so we were, we were um, probably, I would say, Shannon, maybe 40th or 50th in line um, once we got through, um, once we, they broke up, enrolled, and bookmarked. And then we 
when we got into the holding tank, they moved us to a point where we were probably maybe the eighth person to walk into the event space. And so I'm like, Shannon, all the way to the front, go all the way to the front and go to the side where the, where the couches are, where the seats are, because he's going to be sitting there. And as much as I know about Eddie Vedder, the way he sort of turns his head when he talks, I knew that exactly where we were, where we were trying to land, he would be speaking directly to us. And man, he was. And I think the thing that I took away from this, with the exception of the fact that he played every string instrument that he typically plays, including the ukulele um, and the mandolin, uh, as well as the guitar, and did some covers and did um, and did uh, some some of his own music. The thing that I took away most was um, the the fireside chat portion of this. Um, Keith Block, who is the um, co-CEO of Salesforce was kind of speaking to him. And, and if you know anything about Eddie, he's not the best speaker. Um, he, and he's kind of shy until he gets behind his instrument. Um, Keith asked him to kind of respond to a question that was um, in a room full of executives and business people who are the people you're sitting in front of right now, what advice would you give to them? Um, and one of the things about Dreamforce is you feel this sense of philanthropy. Um, and how the community that Ohana comes together to do something to give back. And Eddie's response spoke to me. Um, and he said, if you can do something, do something. Find a way to make a difference. And I walked away feeling incredibly inspired um, and so excited that I got to experience this with one of my dear friends and colleagues. Um, it, 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 it made my dream for us. We learned so much, but that piece of it really, really made, it, my husband even said it best. He, you know, I was telling him about the experience and he was like, man, Benioff knows how to throw a party. Um, so <laughs> I don't know if you, if I missed anything there, but no, we sort of used our old school, like how do you get into the front row of a concert <laughs> um, mentality, um, which fared very well for us. <laughs> Monica is not only an amazing head of sales, she is also amazing at getting you into front rows of concerts. So that was really cool. I think one of the things I would tell you all to take away from this, if you have a user conference yourself at your company, if you do customer events, even on a very small scale, is to think about those sort of special things that will make them feel like they're having a unique experience, which they will then associate with your brand. And that's really what I think Monica and I were talking about as we were leaving that event, which was, does Eddie Vedder use Salesforce? No. Did he give us a Salesforce tip? No. But it sunk that moment in as saying Salesforce values so much their customers and the people who come to their events and the people that use their, their system that this is the kind of experience they wanted to give them. So I would absolutely implore you to be thoughtful about how you can use that same sort of thing to make your customers feel valued and important because they are. So thank you so much, Monica, not only for getting us to the front of the line while I was over attending sessions, <laughs> but also for sharing that with us. I think it's, it's really important to understand how we can take that back into our own daily interactions. And by the way, when I say customers, I also mean your own internal employees, right? They're your customers too, because they're choosing to come to work with and for you every single day. So I want to give you just a few more things that had me super jazzed that I was really pumped up about. And then um, if you are one of our customers, we'll be sharing with you in our 2020 plan, some of the things we saw there that we thought, man, this is going to be perfect for this particular customer. But one, in one of the keynotes, I saw integrated email. And what is so cool about integrated email is you can now take a form or a survey, put it directly in an email to somebody. So I could send one, dear Monica, can you please tell me if you think you are gonna have any new Salesforce products being rolled out in your organization this year? And Monica could answer it right inside of the emails that she were replying to me and it would send that information directly into my Salesforce so that she doesn't have to go to a whole separate mechanism. And I think that's one of the things we're constantly trying to do is to make it easier for people to do business with us. So less clicks, less interruptions. And so integrated email I thought was a really Really cool thing. The next thing I thought was really awesome is the recycle bin has now moved up to the nav bar. So if you are internal admin, act as an internal admin, work with a partner as your admin, you now can recover things 
that if you had admin permissions before, once you deleted it, you had to go through a lot of things to get to that recycle bin. Now it's right there. So it's basically like this really nice undo feature, which I really enjoyed. We saw, oh, one of the things that I love the best, I saw the pilot test at Trailhead DX, and I was in this whole entire room full of developers, and I said, what's this little thing you've got here? And the lady handed me her phone. She's like, check out this thing. And I picked it up, and I looked at it, and she was like, why don't you say into it, I have this new opportunity, and it's $10,000, and the close date is August 31st. And so I said it, and it uses something like talk to text, but it's Einstein. And it immediately popped up and said, did you mean this contact? Did you mean this opportunity? Did you want me to change it to this amount? And did you want me to change it to this date? Press yes. And I was so excited about this that my hand literally started shaking and I dropped the demo phone. <laughs> At that point, the lady said to me, you're not a developer, are you? And I said, no, I'm not a developer. She said, nobody else has had that reaction. Well, they launched it at the admin keynote. They showed this as the demo. People were standing on their chairs. They were waving their hands above their heads and cheering. They were so pumped about this. And then I felt like, oh, I see now these are my people. <laughs> so this is a really cool thing that I think we're gonna start to see become even more powerful is how you can enable your users to use mobile and use mobile in a way that makes good sense to allow them to get back what they're doing. So. All of this in artificial intelligence and machine learning that we're starting to see sort of appear in our home screens, it's now going to be available on mobile. That was super, super cool. So we saw uh, those demos and then also learned about a, a new nonprofit that is in Boston that is using Salesforce to help change people's lives, which I just truly enjoyed. So we are going to open up for questions. Andrew's going to let us know if there are any questions. I have so much more to share, as I'm sure you guys can appreciate. I told you I was going to talk like an auctioneer today. I probably did. <laughs> But I will share this recording with you. I will share my um, session with you. If you want more information on it, please let me know because I love this topic. I could talk about this topic only for four days and <laughs> I really could do it. So you'll let me know. I'll share all of the things that I told you I was going to give you the companion worksheet. And then, of course, if you want us to help you find additional things based on your company, um, beyond the prescription that we're gonna send to you, let us know because we will be very happy to dig through that stuff and help you get all of the things that you can out of this free, amazing content that Salesforce makes available. So Andrew, any questions? Yeah, we do, we already have one. So um, I'll go ahead and, and read it off um, and then and Shannon will just answer it. And guys, as you have more questions, feel free to chat it or, um, you know, when we're done, go ahead and say something. So question one, um, hey, I'm a salesperson. Should I be attending Dreamforce? I know it's a big investment. That's a good question. That is a great question. So uh, what Salesforce does very well, and it is a big investment, as you know, hotel prices jump up. Um, we can really see the effect of having 171,000 attendees on a city at a time. But it does not matter who you are, there is something that is tailored for you. So uh, apart from just Dreamforce and the education that they have there, there are other vendors and partners that are putting on their own educational events at the same time. So I also ran over and attended for a little bit something called Ops Stars, which was focused on sales ops people, which, you know, those are really my people. I love sales ops. I live for it. I could talk about that all of the time. And so I think Regardless of your role, there's an executive track where you can get in and understand how to use Salesforce as an executive, how to get the things you want out of it, how to roadmap, but also network with other huge executives from giant companies. There are sales tracks that make really good sense. They, they will show you how to use um, prospecting cadence and your lead object to you know, really multiply your prospecting. So kind of regardless of where you are and what you've been doing, there's something at Dreamforce for you. So I would say, if it's something you're interested in doing, tickets sold out in, I think, hours this year. Start to think about how it fits into the budget for your organization and the business case impact. So really do, do that sort of impact use case to say what's the ROI, and then work with either your Salesforce partner or your Salesforce account executive to see how you can get on that list so you can get the tickets when they get released because that that was really a challenge that we saw this year absolutely 
Um, we got some more coming in actually, Shannon. So Great. Bill wants to know, um, where were you able to attend any marketing cloud events? And if so, what were some of the top items that you mentioned? Hey, Bill. Hi, friend. So yes, marketing cloud is something that is really, it's starting to become like the secondary thing. It's sales cloud, marketing cloud. Mm -hmm. And so there were tons of things around marketing cloud, lots of things on how to use Pardot better. There were some things on, you know, the product formerly known as exact target. I saw some things on exact target here at the Pittsburgh base camp that I thought were pretty phenomenal. And so I saw some more things on that at Dreamforce and really Bill, I think what you're going to see a marketing cloud that's going to be super powerful is the ability to use Einstein. So now with marketing cloud, if somebody doesn't open an email, you can assign something to Einstein that interrupts your journey. So if you have a journey that says, send an email, send a secondary email, send a white paper offer. If somebody doesn't open that, now Einstein can interrupt that journey and send them on, on, the, on another path. So there's now decision branching logic that I think is going to be insanely powerful inside of marketing cloud. And um, I think one of the other things I want to tell you about marketing cloud, Bill, that we're seeing is that people are now really getting focused on marketing cloud as its own standalone discipline, which is super cool. So that is something that that is really exciting um, about marketing cloud. So thanks for that. I also wanted to give a shout out to the person who was inside of Appy. So I saw Appy and Appy happens to be my daughter's favorite character. And it was late night in Pittsburgh. So I FaceTimed her and, and I said, look who I can see right now. It's Appy. And whoever was inside of Appy came running over. They spotted me, came running over, took the phone off of me and was like spinning it around, like sort of blowing kisses. And <laughs> My seven-year-old was so pumped about that, that that's when I was like, yes, everything here is about an experience. So shout out to you, secret happy person. We'll have, to, we'll have to figure out who that was. Maybe contact someone in Salesforce. Um, we have another question. Courtney Joyce, thank you so much for giving us a question. Um, she wants to know when is the next Dreamforce? And then also when is the next Pittsburgh meetup, which is, you know, a great, great question. So Yes. Yay. Hi, Courtney. So the next Dreamforce is November 9th next year. Um, Dreamforce has a tendency to sort of bounce between September, October, and November, sort of depending on um, how they can get the entire city to get clogged up <laughs> for a whole week. So next year, it will be November 9th, which I think will be better for everybody because coming off of a week of Dreamforce and going into a week of Thanksgiving was really challenging for a lot of people. The next Pittsburgh meetup, I will make sure we also share that with um, all of the Pittsburgh people who are on this call because it will be a mix of all of the Pittsburgh groups. So it will be the admin group, um, the developer group, the nonprofit group, and the women in tech group will all come together for one Pittsburgh meeting. So I'll make sure that we send that, that link out to everybody. That'll be in January. Right. Yeah. And is there, uh, is there any other questions that anybody would have? That's, that's the last one that we have um, on the chats and the, um, the Q and A. So does anybody have a last second one that they'd like to fill in real quick? I want to say thanks to everybody who attended. I can see so many of our good friends and clients on this call. This is super exciting. Um, shout out to Becky who runs the Salesforce Women in Tech user group. Thank you so much for doing that, for donating your time and for being the type of person that really helps to pull everybody together. You are tremendous. I see um, Annalisa and Monica are on and those are the two who probably had holes in their thighs because every time something exciting happened and I happened to be with them, I was like, whoa, look at this thing. <laughs> so, oh, so great. Any other questions? Yeah, it looks like, um, oh, thank you, Bill. Uh, looks like we don't really have any other questions. So real quick, I'll go ahead and describe to you guys how to get some sticker packs. So everybody likes stickers. My laptop has like a hundred of them on there. Um, we're all a little bit sticker crazy at Cloud Adoption Solutions. So what you can do is after this um, meeting, I have the privilege of hand individually, cr like putting together your sticker packs and mailing them to you. So please um, go ahead and email me at Andrew at cloudadoption.solutions. Um, if you email me where to send them, I will, I promise, immediately, probably Monday morning, go to the post office and send you guys out your stickers and you guys will get a nice variety of sticker packs 
um, there might be a couple, you know, different ones sent in there and uh, we'll get you guys all set up. So, you know, thank you guys all so much for, for joining. Um, once again, Cloud Adoption Solutions, for you guys who don't know, we specialize in development, customization, um, administration, and implementation of Salesforce. So we kind of do it all. So if you have any questions additionally, or want to learn more about what we do, contact me. And then if you guys have more questions about Dreamforce or anything else that went on, I know Shannon has like a billion more things to talk about that she's excited about. So send it our way and she'll handle that. I do. I love it. Thank you everybody for attending. I see so many more of our friends and partners in here. I can't even say hello to all of you. Thank you for attending. Let me know what I left off. I love to talk about this stuff and look forward to an amazing 2020 because I will tell you some of the things that Salesforce is bringing are just drool worthy. So thank you for attending everybody. Andrew, thank you for hosting this and have a fabulous weekend, everyone. Bye everybody.